Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Welcome back. This is the Cyber Underground. I'm your host, Dave Stevens, the Cyber Guy. With me here, Andrew, the Security Guy. What's up, brother? Welcome Good. back, brother. Thanks for having me. Oh, man. I like to stop in here when I get a chance. I'm so excited that you have your own show now uh, every Friday, 10 a.m., when you can do security it. Security matters. Security matters. Security matters, believe me. <laughs> this is security. We love this. This is we love the other cyber. part of security, the, yes. the deep dive into the binary edition. Nobody seems to want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> and when they do, they get all scared. Uh, it's, Don't be afraid. We're going we're to talk get about to more stuff that, that this could scare the piss out of you, unfortunately. Um, Uh-oh. Everybody's got an Alexa. I don't. You know, uh, we had one for a long time. We thought, hey, this is really neat, until I thought, hey, what's this thing really doing in the background? You know, It's, uh. it's connected to my Wi-Fi network. It has control over my speakers. It could talk to my TV. And uh, there's more and more apps come out for it all the time because people keep doing the third-party apps. Mm. And, and we have an Alexa over here, but we're not going to turn it on right now. Uh, Alexa is not really a bad device for the intended purpose. She does exactly what she's supposed to do. She's a personal assistant. She can uh, look up recipes for you, play music for you. That was a really neat one. You're in the kitchen, you're cooking up some food. You say, hey, Alexa, play my playlist, and you got some great music. And uh, it's a good speaker system. And Very nice. It works really well. You can have the Echo extensions in each room or buy another Alexa. It's a little more expensive that way. but. Um, it's kind of a centralized home as personal assistant. The problem is someone who wrote some code into Alexa that apparently not even Amazon was aware of. There's a little Easter egg in there and got caught uh, this uh, last week in Portland, Oregon. Someone said uh, their conversation in their house was recorded and the conversation was forwarded to somebody on their contacts list. Nice. So. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah, and unbeknownst to them, of course. Unbeknownst. So the person that got the message said, uh, "Why did you call me and give me this message?" Yeah, was, they were talking about their flooring. Yeah, right? you're getting some new flooring in the house or something. <laughs> they thought it was a butt dial, right? You know, it kind of sounds like that. I, I, I get a lot of those. But that's kind of from Alexa. That's kind of what it was. But nobody was on the phone at the time, and it came from, of course, Alexa. Um, this is disturbing, but for two reasons. One. Uh, if you can hack Alexa, which you probably can, it's an IoT device, and, and you can do this, that's disturbing enough. But if someone at Amazon actually wrote a subroutine to forward a recorded conversation to a contact number, that's going too far for a personal assistant. Really? I think you would want to do it. No. Wouldn't I say, Alexa, take a note, send that to Dave, you know, and then say some stuff? Well, you might have a point there. Send that to Dave. I mean, it's I a personal assistant. That, yeah. I mean, I might tell my personal assistant, call Dave and tell him this. I'm just saying. Oh, you make a good point. You know, I didn't even... <laughs> so the functionality, maybe it was not unreasonable to have in a personal Take assistant. Take a note, send it to somebody, and then they send it to somebody. Now, what I read, you. what I read was this. Alexa's supposed to ask you, did you, did you say Dave Stevens? Oh, confirm the action. Confirm that it asked yeah. for this contact, and then did... Do you, you want me to send this to Dave Stevens? So what I read was that that lady had a bunch of them in the house, and potentially one of them misunderstood. And said yes. And, and misunderstood her as saying these things. Now, I don't know if that's just Amazon's, you know, whatever. But that, I think, is a bigger problem because this stuff's so new. We sort of got a lack of intelligibility there. Right. Apparently, there's no, um, what would you, you would call it like a, you know how we um, deny all. So, like, say your uh, location uh, service is on your phone. Like, I leave mine off, mostly to save battery. So then when I want to do something, like uh, open table, i got to go turn it on. Because it, it, so to me, restaurants in your area. Yeah, and yeah. so Alexa should be off mm. from anything right. so that I actually have to go somehow let it be able to forward messages. The problem is just having her plugged in, right? Like our yeah. Alexa's right now, you can see the little red ring around it and the red mute button. Supposedly it's muted, right? But that's oh, the it's only not. It's indicator. still listening. So it's still... It's just not responding. It's not going to respond. So yeah, the speaker works. It could be recording us right now. Yeah, just like that paint, that wall behind us can hear our sound waves. <laughs> that speaker can hear those sound waves. So they're, you know... Well, that's an interesting point. I don't think we've ever mentioned on the show that uh, people can use low-powered lasers uh, reflecting on mm -hmm. a piece of glass. Sure. 
and the glass vibrates like an old-time speaker would, yep. and because like of the, the 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 vibration and making the laser beam uh, vibrate with the glass, yeah. you can actually interpret those sounds yep. and hear a recording from a laser beam on glass. Yep. That's why from miles away. That's why secure places have double pane glass. I think from outer space they can do that too. From outer satellites. I think from satellites they can. They have lasers that can do. That. I haven't heard that. I that think they be... can zoom in right on your windshield, and when you're in there singing in your car in traffic. They find out if you can carry a, a freaking tune or not. <laughs> <laughs> like, this guy's singing flat. Dude. Yeah. Well, this is uh, this is disturbing that yeah. it's only been recognized in Alexa, but I think, uh, by the way, audience, I'm pointing to Alexa, who's down here, if you're wondering what I'm pointing to. It just looks like I'm pointing off camera. <laughs> There's actually an Alexa right there. I, this is the only device we, we know of right now, Google Home. Wouldn't they all do that? that? We don't know yet, do we? No one's Aren't they all caught. like PAs? They're supposed to be, but yeah. no one's been caught doing this. And I'm like, a, I'm like, a, again, I'm, I'm, I'm a, I think that functionality is required in a PA, but I, I do think that there should, I mean, it shouldn't be happening if you don't know it does it. Like, that, it, maybe there's no education. Yeah. And we've all, we were even saying, I think on previous episodes, you should presume that everyone's listening. Just like when you have your camera on, you better presume everyone in the world's watching. Yeah. yeah because yeah. potentially, if you're hacked, they are. Yeah. And you should right. never send nude pictures of yourself <laughs> to someone because they live forever somewhere. Forever. Yeah. <laughs> so it, you, you know. You gotta be really confident of what you got. <laughs> To put that out there. Or what you whatever. say if you have Alexa in your house. That's true. That's I mean, they, imagine, you know, it's a cool spy device if you think about it. You know, I mean, if people sure. weren't thinking in those terms. And for it to forward a message out, I mean, I, if it took that for the world to understand that was possible, I, I presumed it does it. I just didn't. I don't think I've ever tried to send a well, message. We think different than I had a, people. I had one at home as a, as a we gave them all to all of our employees, a Google Home. Google something. You gave something. us, you're, you run a security company. I know. For, I, we did it for like Christmas. We thought it was cool. I don't know what they do with them. Maybe they all threw them in the threw them brick them. I don't know. Uh, no, they're all running their whole their whole house, and now everyone's Google. Yeah, it's a little thingy. <laughs> so we had one at home. I mean, you know, and it's the same thing. Like you 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 the, you tell it to play some music. That's about all we ever do with it. Well, I don't know what it does now. Is it convenient? So apparently, Alexa, you can give her her uh, your credit card. And say, no, I don't think I'd advise that. Tickets. Oh Lord, I, I mean, that's it. that's the functionality. Yeah, this goes pretty deep. It's a real PA with some artificial intelligence. Well, I don't think I'd give it a credit card. It already forwarded out this lady's flooring plans. I mean, I, I, it could forward out your uh, your credit card information to somebody. That's not a good idea. Uh, you know, if you had a human PA, a lot of these mistakes can happen too. Not an oh, exact I'd trust them less. <laughs> <laughs> just humans less. Just do it yourself, ladies and gentlemen. Just don't don't. Yeah, have yeah. To. when it comes to your money, I mean, credit cards and you know, but, yeah. but like your your bank account is a different animal. So we have Google Home, we have Alexa, um, we have our phones. I always um, tell everybody to put the uh, the little cover on your camera on the laptop. Mm -hmm. You can buy the little slide. I give those thing. out too. Uh, yeah, we give those out, and uh, we got to we got to buy some more. We ran out. Everybody loves them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I would advise, even on your phones, put one of those little sliders on there mm -hmm. uh, because one of the most uh, popular Android hacks is to get your location by taking pictures. Nice. Over and over and over again, and they mm -hmm. can you know, find out where and you are. And rob you. Right. For, well, for me, they'd look at the inside of my pocket 90% of the time. Do you have an Android phone? I don't. Wonder why. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, again, the only problem I have with an Android phone is that when you need updates, you have to wait for that vendor's build of Android, the operating system. Yeah. Right? Samsung's got to make one. LG's is that what runs this, the Alexa, is that an Android? You know what, I don't know. I think it is, actually. Okay. It's, uh, it's Java-based, so okay. it's probably Android. Android. Android Some is, Android of their own. Right, it's an Android derivative. Well, it's, a, it's an interesting point, and I, I think it's worth sharing with people. <laughs> I really yeah. do. I mean, I, I just think it's, I think it's important that they understand that that's not a trusted device. What is? I mean, our TVs can what be hacked. What is a trusted? There now, there's an episode question. What, what can what can we actually trust? Because you can't trust device. your employees because they'll open the email links. <laughs> you, you can't tr even trust your C-suite because they won't take the cybersecurity training seriously, and they'll open their email That's links. What, yeah, they will every time. You can trust Dave because he's here teaching. <laughs> you can trust me because I'm here teaching right. and preaching and learning. But what you know what here's you know where the limitation of trust is? What about the stuff we don't know? The unknowns. The, uh, the zero yeah, days. The zero days stuff that always gets through because you've never encountered it before. How do you defend? 
And so how we would all probably fall for that one. Now, historically, throughout the history of humankind, zero days have been out. I mean, you can go yeah. back to the days when cannons appeared in warfare. No one had ever seen those before. And the person that had cannons won all the battles because no one had any defense for cannons until they got their cannons, right? So you gotta go back in history and find out this is a repeating event. So mm. we learn from history, right? If, if people came out with all kinds of new weapons and won wars, cyber's no different. We're gonna keep True. inventing new weapons. True. And the people that have the more resources uh, available and the most time and the most money and the most people, they're gonna be the ones to create the most tools. The United States, North Korea, Russia, China. Or the most like dedicated, like somebody that just sits there and really wow. figures how to hack your Alexa. Yeah, yeah. Like me. 12, 14 hours a day and they get paid for it. Yeah. yeah. Like you and I, we have to do banking and go speaking and teach. And, uh, but these guys could just- We don't have time. It. We don't have time. They got all the time in the world. So do, do you think that the manufacturer was remiss in um, sharing the full capabilities of that device? I know, because when we first started talking, you were like, hey, Amazon maybe didn't even know this was doing this. And I you know, th this might have been a feature that they didn't tell anybody about. <laughs> and, and I agree with you that the feature is uh, functional and useful, but when a user does not know the ramification of the usage of that feature, and it sounds like the confirmations might not have been there. I mean, yeah, there, something didn't happen. Something didn't work right. There's two big bugs there that I would look at, and Amazon the users might say, a bug. No, that's a feature. Yeah, the users a bug. The <laughs> users, the problem always lies between the. The chair and the keyboard, right? That's MCAT. <laughs> the chair and the keyboard. Yeah, it's, it's always between the chair that's and the keyboard. That's me, by the way. That's where I'm always between the, the chair and the keyboard. the problems are human, uh, yeah. and, and that's, again, with cyber. And so, again, human, humans not sharing, the manufacturer not sharing this information properly, and then the human getting it, trusting it too much, or not understanding its capabilities, not asking the questions. I don't know why you have them in all the rooms of your house. I guess I guess, well, if, you're, I guess if you have, like, an automated house and stuff, it'd be cool. I don't know. I, I don't well, have it's, that. It'd be neat to have an automated house, but we had the same thing with the smart TVs just a little while ago. We found out that they can be Hacked. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, it's a lot of them are job based, and, sure. and uh, they have a camera, and they can listen to your voice commands, sure. so they can spy on you. Yep. And uh, they are, and you can have one in every room of the house. You think so you're watching a movie? The movie's, the movie's watching, watching you. Watching you. How's that? <laughs> like Alexa, you think you're talking to Alexa? Alexa's talking to you, or talking to all your <laughs> friends me about commands? you? That's you don't Alexis. even know. <laughs> That's ridiculous, right? Yeah. And I don't know. I, what I love is I love the voice interface. I think the voice interface is going to solve a lot of problems for us. You know, as a, as an analytical tool, as a, as a research tool. Be interesting if just if, just the ability for just data to capture all the stuff that we've talked about, right, and then categorize it and put it in a list and make sense of it because we, we oftentimes ramble on about all kinds of stuff. You know, I don't know what all the ground we cover in the show, but it's a lot of words. You know, I can't recall them all. Can you? We're, we're but hopefully AI hey, can. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> This show. No, I took notes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that I think there's some power there, and I and I, I I believe that that interface. This is a great example of how much work that we still need to do culturally uh, and and in the analytics side to to play with it, right? Because we got to figure out how is it because it's not a human. It doesn't say, Dave, you really want me to send that check, right? Right. It, it really doesn't pause you and stop you. It doesn't have context. It just acts. And so we got to probably work on that a little bit because it'd be nice if it said something like, uh, "You already did this, so you're going to send them another payment." Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would That'd be, be nice. cool. Yeah, and like a real person. In our, and you know, out of the security world, we this this is a thing that's coming because we we want that uh, minority report idea, right? When we're doing research, trying to research an incident real quickly, find a missing child at the mall or whatever it may be, and so we need voice command. Is they're looking at that to be a part of our future. And to me, this is a good a good evidence of you know how some of the evolution that still needs to occur before that's going to be you know resilient uh, enough to be. Now useful. that's been happening in technology from time immemorial. True. I mean, we, we we created cars and they went over 50 miles an hour. We still didn't have seat belts because the users just weren't we aware. <laughs> you don't you don't have seat belts? <laughs> no, but I have this chime in my car. It goes ding, the, the, the annoying ding. chime. <laughs> yeah, until they regulate it, right? Manufacturers wouldn't do it. They had to regulate that well, at, to get seatbelts. The, the argument cars. at first was seatbelts cause death because they would trap you in your car yeah, at the right. wrong oh, time. Oh, and you're burning. That was the manufacturer's argument until about uh, Ralph Nader's time when we had some significant seatbelts. Crash regulation. dummies. The crash test dummies. And yeah, they figured that, it that's out. That's my family. You, you, they figured out that you live. Uh, when, only when they get in the car with you. <laughs> when, we, when we come back, we're going to talk about a new hack that you cannot Ooh. defend against, but there is a, a way you can get out of it. So it's against your networking devices. So oh. until then, we're going to take a little break, pay a few bills, and be back in a minute. Until then, stay safe. Aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's 
law across the sea. Law across the sea comes on every other Monday at 11 a.m. Please join us. I like to bring in guests that talk about all types of things that come across the sea to Hawaii. Not just law, love, people, ideas, history. Please join us for Law Across the Sea. Aloha. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave Stevens. I'm here with Andrew, the Cyber Guy. And uh, we're going to travel this summer. Everybody always travels a little bit this summer. You travel a lot. I'm traveling. And uh, we have a few safety tips to give you from both ends of the spectrum here, security managers and Cyber Underground. Mm -hmm. uh, you're always traveling with your smartphone. People forget your smartphone. Nowadays, it is basically a full-fledged computer. Yes. It is everything that your computer can do, your phone can do, and sometimes better actually, which is unfortunate, but... Uh, the apps are getting powerful. Yeah, the apps are the, the processors, and there's a lot more memory, and they're a lot faster, but they communicate uh, with everything, right? So the, the first thing I tell people, uh, I know Bluetooth is convenient. Turn it off. But turn it off if you're not using it. Uh, Wi-Fi. There's Bluetooth hacks all the time, and people can, well, when Bluetooth first came out, I could stand in line at the airport and actually pair my phone with, with anybody else. Because they had it turned on. Because <laughs> they had it turned on and there was no security at first. Yeah. Now at least there's a pin verification, but there are hacks. Uh, there's blue snarfing yep. and, uh, and a couple other blue attacks. And I won't go into them, but uh, that's, that's a problem. So uh, turn off your Bluetooth. Uh, turn I, off your Wi-Fi. This is a Bluetooth connected device. Yep. I turn off my Bluetooth when I'm at places like DEF CON and stuff like that. And this, you have to. The, you have to. Uh, don't use a public Wi-Fi if you don't have to. Yeah, and keep it off. I, you know, don't, don't walk it's around with it on, because if somebody happens to have something that you, and shouldn't automatically connect to anyway, you always have that box unchecked. Yeah. But if you're walking around and you've been on the Jimbo network and somebody just happens to have the Jimbo network, your phone will connect to the thing. Right. Potentially. The, the automatic connection thing can be a problem too. Some people feel a sense of safety when they install a VPN app on mm -hmm. their phone, right? So the unfortunate thing about the VPN app is you wander from place to place, and if you have that automatic setting on, it's dropping your cell connection, it's creating new Wi-Fi on the public Wi-Fi, you're going to Starbucks, McDonald's, and you get on your cell connection again, and it's always continuously changing networks, and every time it does, your VPN has to be reinitiated. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can't do that fast enough, and if you're doing your banking during that transitional Ow. minute, you're wide open. You can be sniffed. You can be sniffed, and uh, that's not that hard to do. We've proven it at Starbucks. You pop up in your laptop, put in a wireless uh, scanner, put it in promiscuous mm -hmm. mode, use Wireshark, and then it's, yep. it's the Wild West. And people can read your packets, so that's a, that's a very legitimate, there's people paid to do that, so just, just trust that's real. Yeah, so, uh, so also... Don't use public Wi-Fi, while you, especially while you travel. Don't fall you for the email. You should always use trusted Wi-Fi. Trusted Wi-Fi. Yeah, like your home. Trusted Wi-Fi would be like my home. My employer has a trusted Wi-Fi. Yeah. You know, so that's a secure one. But uh, that, that checkbox you were talking about, they automatically yeah. connect. Turn that off. Turn that Don't off. Don't ever use that. I always ask, do you want me to connect to this? And uh, if you say no, you'll stay in your cell carrier. Cell carriers aren't perfect, but they're miles yes. ahead uh, in security. And if you are a criminal, your cell, you know, they, they boomerang's got your cell phone too, so. <laughs> Don't worry about that. Now, there are devices that can fake cell carrier that's towers, saying, yeah. right? Yeah. But no, I would say about. slingshot. Slingshot. Slingshot, yeah. yeah. Not but a that's, that was Boomerang, a law enforcement slingshot. tool that leaked out. That's yeah. why I said if you are a criminal, like, you know, just don't trust that your cell carrier <laughs> is your cell carrier. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's a couple of ways to... We have to give to... advice to criminals as well as the good, ca good guys. You know? Well, you're a good guy. Thanks for doing that. <laughs> In case Support they the whole sphere. In case they, the whole ecosystem, all the stakeholders. <laughs> all the stakeholders. <laughs> Support them all, damn it. That's the hacker mentality, right? Oh. Disobey. Uh, the last thing is don't fall for the phishing scam. Mm. So phishing emails are huge, and especially the spear phishing ones. Mm. And I, I use this example oh, all like the time. when you're traveling. I'm a gamer. Mm -hmm. People know I'm a gamer. They, uh, there was a Sony hack, a couple of them. And my information for my PS4 registration got out. Mm. And uh, I was spearfished saying thank you for buying this game 
uh, if you didn't buy this game, click here. Mm. And I looked at it and went, oh my God, no, I didn't buy this $60 game. And you then almost I, clicked it. I almost clicked it, but I, then I looked, and the only thing that stopped me, I'm telling you, the only thing that stopped me was, was, was Halo. Mm. It's a Microsoft game. Mm. They don't make it for PS4, and I don't have an Xbox. Mm. So I went, wait. Not I went about that. Not a, that was a pretty good spearfish, but uh, not good enough. It was a enough. pretty good spearfish. I mean, it looked legit, and it almost got me in there. So, and those things, uh, your phone's not immune. No. Those, those, uh, they call them drive-bys, mm -hmm. where you go to a website and you don't know the code's downloaded to your phone. Uh, you can also get a text message with malware embedded in like a TIFF file, yeah. which is a uh, a, a graphics image format, file, yeah. right? It's an image file, and and when your computer, your smartphone renders that image, so you can see it, it's actually running the code that's embedded within it. Yep. So it's executed, and then once it's on there, people can remotely attack your phone. Uh, Android's most susceptible to this, but iPhone is also yeah. susceptible. Now, the thing that makes iPhone different is they have sandboxing of applications. So if someone hacks into your instant message with an image, they don't have access to your email or your web browser. Just your IM stuff. Just your IM stuff. But if they hack your, your browser, they can sit there and wait for you to go onto your bank account through a browser. Ooh. And a lot of people do that because they didn't download their app for their oh, bank. Oh, right. Really? So, so, and they can. Yeah, those those apps are in containers. That's a good right. thing about now, that. Now, the, the one people uh, attack the the Wi-Fi, not the Wi-Fi, the, um, the the browser the most on phones because they want to use that to uh, build up the hits on their website. Right? They're having you go visit their websites that mm. they support, and that raises the rankings and, of course, makes them money. I see. Every click means a couple of cents. Oh, that's, I didn't even know. That's just, yeah, a, just a remote money maker. Nefarious, yeah. And they're, they're, I know they're trying to put some mining malware and stuff on phones too now. And oh, to mine for, Bitcoin, for Bitcoin because mining. you're a processor. And yeah. if you, uh, you, know, you do a broad spectrum of all these processes all working in consort, then you can actually mine Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah so if, if your phone starts running out of power, <laughs> it, oh, may be, it may be doing something. Yeah, yeah. You know, if it... Uh, if it but we're talking about specifically when you're traveling. When you're you're super vulnerable when you're traveling. So and if you can, our friends, Rodney, some of these guys, they all carry a burner phone. They don't even, right? So when they yeah. travel, they use an old, non-smart phone. Yeah, when I, when I used to go to Japan, Hong Kong, and mainland China, I had an old flip phone, an Nokia flip phone. And uh, I, I'm telling you, it was from the 90s, but it worked great. And They're hard to get now. They're really hard to get, and people like them, and it only does that one CDMA frequency that, in that country, mm -hmm. and uh, you can only be on their network, and you can't get hacked. And it phones or text, that's it. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's all it does. So it's, it's a good way to do it. When it's a little traveling. bit more expensive for the calling because you can't sure. use your plan, right? But, but it's better than risking you. So if you're not a confident user or if you're a, a, a what is it, like a when you're just not responsible. If you're not a responsible user of your phone, or if you don't know what he's been telling you for the last five minutes, if it don't make sense and you understand it, <laughs> leave your phone home. You probably shouldn't take it when you travel. No, yeah, just leave it home. Uh, and definitely stay off networks, and definitely don't go to your bank account. Don't Just don't do any of that stuff when you're traveling, right? Just use it to call people if you have an emergency. Otherwise, you're on vacation, for God's sakes. Put uh, your phone down. People think they're, they're, they're safe when they plug into the Ethernet port in the hotel room. Oh, Lord, and no. And it's, it's the same <laughs> thing. Uh, if you it's do not that trusted. and you're doing... Uh, like if you, you have to do something on your like your bank website oh. and you're plugged into the Ethernet port, at least make sure you have HTTPS. Yeah, but I URL. mean, you should have a VPN the for that. Very, very least. And then a VPN would actually be better than that. There's yeah. services you can buy. There's a, it starts from what, a buck fifty a month and goes on up. But again, some you think you're, you're doing well, but Australia, the government did a study of the VPN services offered in that country. 18% mm -hmm. of them did not encrypt the web traffic. Why? Wow. I don't know. So they just so the Australian officials could read it. <laughs> I, they have a backdoor, yeah? I don't know. Okay, let's, let's talk about this. VPN uh, filter. VPN filter, this is uh, another attack. Uh, Nasty now, little tool. From what I've read, uh, it's probably state-sponsored. I saw U.S. CERT put this out. Huh? U.S. CERT and InfraGuard both put out, uh, this is VPN filter. It affects the following systems. I'm going to read them now. Linksys, Microtik, Netgear and TP-Link, as well as QNAP, NAS devices, network attached storages, and uh, and routers. And routers. Yeah. So you got to be careful of this. Now, apparently, there's a, it's a three-stage attack, but the first one is what we're going to talk about today because it's the one to, you can use to get rid of it. Um, the first one is a persistent. Even if you reboot the device, it stays in uh, the main memory. Mm -hmm. So the only way to clear this thing out 
is to reset your device to the factory default, yeah. to false. Now, in the back of some, most of these consumer systems, they have a little paper clip hole in the back. You stick a paper clip in, hold that down for 30 seconds with the power on, yeah. and then you power it off for 30 seconds and power it back on. Yeah. What you've done is you reset the firmware to factory defaults, then when you pull the plug, uh, you let the capacitors drain out so the energy's all gone, mm -hmm. and the memory, the, the fresh memory clears. Yes. Right, so your volatile memory's clear. Then you plug it back in, and then you have to reset all your settings. No, first go download the most recent firmware for the device, <laughs> then yeah. reset all your settings. Uh, we should mention that. If you know how to do firmware, update. go do it. Now, most modern uh, Wi-Fi routers have a, a web interface that you, yes. can, you can log in locally from your, your little home network, and uh, they have a little button, update firmware. Yes. So if you're going to so do, do that, do that. Uh, but I will tell you this much because uh, I have multiple people on my network, and if I click that update button and my wife's on her VPN, I'm going to hear about it. So yeah, go around do, and do ask it people. when everybody's <laughs> off. Yeah, you saw in the real world, you kick everyone off the network first, especially because you're going to reset the router, which right, is right. going to be defaulted, which is a problem. So there's, yeah, so. And everyone's going to need a There's a process paper. involved here. So if you're home, if this is your home device, which is kind of, these are basically consumer grade these are all type consumer of devices grade things, available yeah. at Best Buy. You probably have one or two or some of these. I don't know what all you guys are doing at home, but um, yeah, blow it away. Get, get the latest firmware, yeah. close all the ports, go back, read the manual, understand what it does if you never did the first time, you know. And there's, there's right. other tricks to use. I mean, you should always have a Mac white listing. Yep. So get the Mac address and of all your devices, put the yep. Mac addresses yes, on there. Definitely use Mac filtering. Turn off turn off the external port so you can't get to it from the outside. Right. right? No, well, you're never going to need to remote into your router. You're not a big administrator yeah, of your don't house. Do that. The, the, it's your home. What's the default that Linksys has? Um, uh, remote management. Yeah, do, through and WAN. disable yeah, all, that, do that, yeah. all that stuff. You don't need anything ever from outside coming in. Set up a, a DMZ. Put some, put the garbage on the DMZ. Your your TVs and all that crap. Don't, don't put that on the network with your. Uh, you do right. your banking and your workstation. Uh, most most routers have a guest network. You can put all your TVs yeah, and all that. Yeah, you can yeah, put guest that network. on your guest network yeah, and then yeah. have computers. Your safe stuff should be on your your primary network. Right. Yeah. And so then you, you don't ever let any of your guests on that. Make them use the guest network because they bring in garbage into your house. That's right. Unless it's Dave. Now, let me go through the list one more time before we're out of here. Linksys, Microtik, Netgear, TP-Link, and QNAP. Now, these are only the ones that we've discovered so far. Mm. Cisco says there's none of their devices affected. Don't know, but Linksys is actually a Cisco consumer-grade product. Yeah. Um, I, I know uh, Asus is not on the list, but it might come up. Mm. Now, there's some sophisticated products out there, but it yeah. might come up in the future. So Yeah, and this uh, thing still may be, hunt, it may be still hunting for, you know, victims, so we don't know. Actually, this is an extension from uh, March. Mm. There were the first uh, notifications of this came out in March. I see. It was state-sponsored in March, and uh, it's been going on. Now it's heavily researched as a three-stage attack. Yeah, and I hear Ukraine's really vulnerable. They got Ukraine's half, been a, half a million covered. machines just crushed. Yeah. Uh, we're, not, we're not to that stage yet, thankfully. Okay, you want to wrap it up with a Security Matters plug? Security Matters, every Friday, 10 a.m. Uh, we're talking physical security because security matters. All right. All right, everybody, thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll see you next week. Until then, stay safe.